This video will show how to select an optimal exposure for G3 snapshot sensors. We have already factory reset our sensor, a Gokator 3210, and have the latest version of Gokator Classic installed. The sample target we are using is a shiny piece of machined aluminum with countersunk holes. We have positioned the Gokator 3210 at a distance greater than 165 millimeters from the scan target. This is where the measurement range for this sensor model begins. Let's align our sensor by choosing flat surface and align in the alignment tab as seen here. In the upper left corner of the Gokator GUI, click on the scan page, click video mode, and then click the snapshot button. After completing the structured light pattern, an image from the sensor's front camera is now shown in the data viewer. By selecting the camera drop-down menu in the display viewer, we can select both cameras. It is important to use both cameras to judge an optimal exposure value. One camera or another might expose differently depending on the interaction of the surface being scanned and the different angles of the cameras. Click on the configure view gear icon in the upper right corner of the data viewer and select exposure. This will display underexposed areas blue and overexposed areas red in the data viewer. The sensor and exposure tab are already selected. You can change the exposure by moving the slider or typing in a specific value in microseconds. After each change, a new snapshot must be taken in order to see the updated exposure in the data viewer. Here is an example of a good exposure value for the sample part. There is neither overexposure or underexposure on the part details we are interested in. Select surface mode and click the snapshot button again. This will produce a 3D scan in the data viewer. Click the 3D icon and drag on the viewer display with your mouse to look at the scan. Although the top of the part is scanned accurately, the slopes of the countersunk holes are not represented well. To combat this, select Advanced in the Sensor tab and choose Interreflective for Material Type. While a diffuse option is suitable for most materials, Interreflective is useful with targets whose surface may show reflections from other surfaces in the scanned area, such as the countersunk hole seen here. To further increase the quality of the scan, let's set up a second exposure. Go back to the video scan mode, choose exposure, and change the exposure mode from single to multiple. A new exposure can be added by clicking the plus button seen here. When an exposure is highlighted in blue, the data viewer will show results for that exposure. In this way, one exposure is set for the countersunk holes, and another is set for the specular surface. The final output in surface mode shows the full curvature of the countersunk holes. A maximum of three exposures can be combined using a single G3 sensor. However, each added exposure will reduce the effective frame rate, lowering maximum scan speed dramatically. You can track your scan speed by looking at the max frame rate figure shown here in the trigger tab. If you would like to learn more about LMI's built-in Gokator software, feel free to sign up for a course at the Training Center page at lmi3d.com.